Today we're here to talk about greeting customers and our uniform policy. Our uniform policy is to have black pants on, a company provided shirt, which is tucked in with the belt, and always have a name badge on, which is provided by our company as well. And in this day and age, a face mask. If your location serves beggar's pizza, there must be an employee at all times with a beggar's shirt on. Greeting customers is one of our number one priorities. Each location prides themselves on customer service. You see a customer walk in the door, you say, thank you, welcome to Gas and Wash. When purchasing cigarettes or alcohol, we must check an ID to make sure that they are 21. When we scan the item, it will stop us until we check the ID. When we have the ID in hand, we look to make sure that this is the person and their birthday is correct, and then we scan the ID. That will let us continue our process. Once the process is done, we then ask if they have a rewards card, and we continue on to pay. When customers are purchasing cigarettes or alcohol, the law is they must be 21. So when we scan the product, it will then stop us so that we can scan their ID. Once we have their ID in hand, you check to see if it's really the customer, and then you check their birth, and then you scan their ID. It then will let us move on with our trans transactions to scan other items. In this segment, we will be talking about EBT and the SNAP program. When purchasing with your EBT card, packaged goods are fine. Cigarettes, alcohol, hot food cannot be purchased on a link card. In this segment, we will be discussing how, when there is downtime during your eight hour shift, what needs to be done. If you have time to lean, you have time to clean. So with that being said, when you have time, you walk outside the counter, you come to see the product to see if it needs to be front and face. You go to the coolers, you make sure that all the shelves are stocked, that they are facing forward. You wipe down the cooler doors, you have more time, there's time to stock the cups, make sure the open air cooler is full, make sure the floor is swept, and make sure the floor is mopped. Every hour, the bathroom should be checked, not only checked, but wiped down. Should be mopped if needed. And in this segment, we're gonna talk about video gaming. It is every cashier's responsibility to be aware who is in the gaming area. The law states you must be 21 to enter into the gaming area. This is very important that each and every cashier takes on the responsibility of looking into the gaming area to make sure you are 21. When doing the garbage cans, we all have a cart that we roll around so that way when we have the bags of garbage, they do not drip all over the sidewalk and make a mess. When changing the garbages, we pull out the, the bag, we put it into this one, we take the new bag and we, we put it in the garbage can and tuck it into the sides so that it's not flopping around. Now to our outside segment. Um, first thing we do in the morning is we sweep the lot and what we call this is detail the curbs. I'm gonna have our stock guy come out and he's going to get all the corners of each curb by the parking spots. After we detail the corners of the parking lot, then we get the push broom and we detail the edges and continue along the perimeter of the station. Once we are done sweeping the perimeter of the location, we will then turn and detail the exits and entrances to our location. 
Okay, our next segment is wiping down the pumps. When we start wiping down the pumps, we go head to toe. So we start with the header, we wipe it down, we then go to the side walls inside the header, wipe those down, we wipe down the displays that are on top of there, we come down from the step stool, and then we wipe the front facing, we then take a paper towel with some Windex, and we wipe down the monitors, we wipe down the buttons, we pull the hose out, we wipe the inside where the hose goes, we wipe down the hose, and then we finish off with wiping down the bottom plate. Okay, today we're going to start with power washing, and in Power Washing 101, we're going to start with how you get the power washer ready. And at this point, I'm going to have my assistant here come, and he's going to check the oil and check the gas to make sure that everything is running okay with it. And we got gas. Now the next thing is the uh, young man is going to hook up the water hose to the power washer. It is important that we have water going to the power washer prior to its starting. Once the hose is hooked up, then we hook up the gun that we use so that we can have pressure to the power washer. Just snaps in nice and easy. He makes sure it's tight. He's going to turn on the spigot. Now that the water is ready, he's going to start the machine. First things first, he's going to make sure that the gun is bled so that there is no pressure buildup. In order to bleed it, you just squeeze the handle and let the water run for about 30 seconds. I think you got 30 seconds there, Bob. Yeah. After you bleed the line, you go to the actual power washer and you get the choke ready. You turn it on and you pull the string. And now you're ready to go. When you start power washing, you have to make sure that the nozzle is close to the ground. Go back and forth in a straight line motion so that you can see that you are evenly cleaning the cement. Always be aware of your surroundings as customers can be pulling up. Now that we have finished the sidewalk, we're gonna move on to the pumps. And as we hook our hose up, we make sure that we cover each coupler with a cone so that when the traffic goes by, nobody runs over the couplers. We then start on the pumps in the same fashion of going back and forth. The most important thing is that we do not use the power washer on the pumps themselves. When we, when we go in a back and forth motion, we make sure that we stay at least a half an inch away from the pumps. Okay, now we're on to power washing the diesel islands. Before we even start power washing, we need to pre-clean the stains so that way when we do power wash, they come out a little easier. So what we're doing right now is spraying concrete cleaner onto the concrete and with a very strong brush, we are going to scrub the concrete so that we can get some of the stains out prior to power washing. 
as you see, going back and forth in small strokes, you'll be able to identify where the stain was and how you are removing it. Now we're on to snow blowing. First thing we do is we check the oil. Level is good. We don't need to add any oil today. Next, we check the level on the gasoline. Gas is filled. We turn on the fuel switch. It's on this side, honey. And I don't even, I don't even, did I say I don't know how to run these? <laughs> All right, you want to do that again? All right, go, go from uh, there. Let's start over. Yeah. Okay. And now we're on to our snow blowing. First, we have to check the oil. Oil level is good. Next, we check the fuel. Fuel level is good. Check the on switch for the fuel. Prime the motor. Check the throttle and crank away. And we're ready to snow blow. When maintaining the snowblower, after each use, you must clean out the bottom blades. There is a tool on each snowblower that will help you stick in here to clean out the snow. Do not put your hand in the snowblower. Hi, uh, my name is Larry and I'm the safety coordinator for filling propane today for Lenny's Gas and Wash. And this is my assistant today, one of our managers, Josh. And we're gonna go through five steps of safety measures, okay, to execute whenever you're starting to do propane. The first one is to make sure that you know where the emergency cutoff switch is. This is a pull cable, so if you ever have a problem, you just come out here and you pull this cable and this releases the gas to the unit. The, safe, the second safety measure is making sure that you're equipped okay, with all the necessary equipment. Okay, the uh, first thing Josh is going to put is his vest on. Um, all of our uh, maintenance people that fill propane or do outside uh, parking lots are always supposed to wear a vest. Okay, This is so that they don't get hurt in any single way. He also wears a face shield or safety glasses. Um, he has a, a, a quick release rubber gloves that protects his hands from cold propane. Um, and that there's plenty of equipment inside the uh, cage here, screwdrivers and uh, leak detectors. Okay, so um, this is a DOT cylinder inspection that's very, very important, okay? We're going to check this tank out before we fill it to make sure it's safe for the customer. We're gonna check the top ring, we're gonna check the valves, we're going to uh, flip the tank over, look at the beauty ring on the bottom that holds the tank, make sure there is no rust pitting or anything like that. There's no burn marks on the tanks whatsoever. If all of that is good, we now go to the second part of that, and that's looking at the date that's on the tank. This tank is a set at what year, Josh? January of 2021. 2021, because it does not have a letter in front of it, it's good for 12 years. If it was to have a letter S in front of it, it is only good for seven years. If it has a letter E in front of it, it is good for five years. So we're gonna add 12 years to the uh, a year on this tank, and that's when it expires. If it's in code and it's all clean, we are ready to fill it. Training segment number two, filling a propane tank by using the scale. This is the only tank that we fill, uh, which is a 20 pound cylinder for barbecue grills. 
Josh now is going to grab the uh, meter here and he's going to reset the meter. The only reason why we're resetting the meter so we know that as we're filling this tank, it's getting gas into the tank. That's the only reason. He's then going to grab the hose uh, that fills these tanks. The scale is always set at 37 pounds. Okay, nothing more. 37 pounds for a barbecue grill and that's it. He's going to hook up the hose to the tank. He's then going to open the hose valve first. And then he's going to turn on the pump and then he's going to open the service valve and he's going to start to fill the tank. Once the scale starts to tip, he is then going to shut the system down. That means the tank is full. So at this point, the tank is full. He's now going to turn off the hose valve. Then he's going to turn off the power and then he's going to turn off the service valve. He's going to unhook the hose valve. And because this tank did not come in, come in with a service cap, he is then going to give them a new service cap and enter it onto the tank. And then return the tank to the customer. So segment three, is this training on filling a propane tank other than a barbecue grill using a bleeder valve, okay? The first thing we want to do is evaluate the tank and make sure that the tank is secure, it's looking good, there's no rust spots, it's in good shape. Um, and then we're going to grab um, the fitting for this particular tank. This fitting is now going to connect to this port He's got that nice secure. Now he's going to use the, the, the regular hose and fit, and, and fit this. He's now going to open up his hose valve. Okay, his hose valve. And then he's going to open up his bleeder valve here on the top, which is a thumb screw bleeder valve. Okay, he's gonna open up his service turn the pump on and this is going to start to fill but there's no scale for this your bleeder valve when it is at 80 percent filled will start to send out a white mist of gases once that mist comes out psh, is now filled so we're going to turn off the hose valve we're gonna shut off the bleeder. We're gonna turn off the pump and then shut off the service valve on here and do a disconnect of the tank. And that tank is now complete. Okay, so this is segment four. This is filling a RV or a service vehicle and we have a makeshift vehicle here on this cart. Um, this is Filling this tank is just like filling the last tank, except this tank is mounted to a vehicle. It's the same concept. So what Josh is gonna do is he's gonna reset his meter once again. So he has it all back down to zeros. He's going to pull the gun hose from the cabinet and hook it to the vehicle's tank. He has no valves to turn on here in this is a direct line but he does have the bleeder valve to open so now he's going to open the bleeder valve he's going to walk over and turn on the power he's going to come back to the gun which has a trigger on it and now he's going to pull that trigger okay and he's going to focus his view on this bleeder valve He's going to keep that trigger pulled until he's got white gases coming out of that bleeder valve. Once he does, that tank is filled. He stopped it. 
He's shutting off the bleeder valve. He's turning off the motor. He's going back and disconnecting the gun. He will get a little backsplash of propane, but it's next to nothing. He's going to hang this back up. He's going to replace this safety cap on the tank. Now he's going to take the customer inside the store with the amount of gallons that he's pumped and we finished our, and concluded our training on propane for the uh, employees of Gas and Wash. Before you go over, how do you uh, check your vacuums here? First of all, you should check your vacuums every 30 minutes. Uh, make sure that the claws are clean. Uh, what you do here, pair of those pliers, and you can actually uh, put it in the claw and pull out any debris. The next thing you're going to be doing is you'll be checking your canister, which we have a ladder. So we have our ladder. Open your ladder. Be safe going on the ladder. Go up to the top. There's a shutoff valve. Turn the valve off. This is our canister. This is where it uh, collects all the debris. Grab a garbage can. You're able to open this up and all the debris will come out. Okay? So that's the way to properly clean your vacuums. Next thing we'll be doing here is we're gonna go to the back room. We're gonna show you how to clean out the canisters in the back. So we're gonna to proceed to the back room. Okay, we're gonna shut off the vacuum, vacuum number one. Right now it's on hand. We're gonna turn the unit to off. Then we're gonna go down to the canister. Where the canister is at, we're gonna open the canister. There's a plastic bin in here. We're gonna dump the bin into the trash can. Put it back in. Close the unit. Then we're gonna check the bags up top. All these bags, gotta make sure they're clean of debris. Close the unit back up, and we're gonna turn the unit back on. Back to hand. We're good to go. So this is for general safety as you're working in the car wash tunnel. We're making sure you guys are safe when you're working in here. What you want to do is make sure you're staying away from any moving equipment and also moving any hoses or anything that could get caught in the moving equipment. If you need to move any equipment or anything and the wash is going and you don't feel safe, go ahead and hit the emergency stop. To show you the proper way to load a vehicle. First of all, when the car pulls in, you always want to use two hands. Bring the customer in, keep them into the inside rail, bring them all the way up, as far as you can go, all the way to the red line. Stop, make sure they put it in neutral, and they're okay. Have a nice day, sir. Thank you so much. And then push the send button. If there's any problems, you could always uh, hit your emergency stop and shut the wash down. Like if somebody starts jumping rollers. Have a nice day. Thank you. So this is to how to do the incident report whenever you have an accident or incident at the car wash. Customer will come up, tell you something's wrong, go ahead and grab a copy of the incident report. The customer is going to only fill out their information, their name, address, vehicle make, model, year, license plate. We're going to fill out the rest of the information, what happened, and any injuries, damages, and such like that. You're going to use plain language when you fill out this part. We're not going to lay blame to anybody. We're just stating what happened. When that is done, just tell the customer if the manager's not here, 
we will inform the manager as soon as possible. You'll look it over and give you a call as soon as you can. Once the customer is done, go ahead and leave this for the manager if he's not here. Text him or leave him a note so he knows to look at that first thing in the morning. All right.